and it featured heads displayed on spikes for more than half of that time, including that of Guy Fawkes and William Wallace. That's pretty gruesome. London was the largest port in the world at the beginning of the 1900s, and it was in this area that ships from around the world would load and unload their cargo. With the introduction of container ships in the 1960s, it has recently undergone a £1 billion redevelopment that took five years to complete. It looks a lot like a motorcycle helmet. It's a very environmentally friendly building with solar panels on the roof, movement sensors to turn lights on and off as required inside, and cold ground water that's used to cool the building and flush the toilets. The River Thames used to be a lot wider up until the late 19th century, but it became narrower by land reclamation, such as when they built the embankment. Because it was wider, it had a solid... I'm really getting into this. You've certainly got a knack for guiding, Sid. Opened in 1894, Tower Bridge has the ability to open up from the centre, allowing ships to pass through. The bridge is still raised the equivalent of twice a day, a bit different from the 17 times a day when it was first built. You only need to give 24 hours notice if you want the bridge to be opened for your ship. And I wonder if you can guess how much it costs. Well, I'll tell you. It's free! Looking to the right, we can see some of the tall buildings at Canary Wharf, which was an old Docklands area and is now a modern and exciting place to both work and live. To the left, close to the bridge, is the 